I'm Marlies Knippenberg, CEO of Kirtan Hospitality. We are a mixed-use operator and we say a new eye on hospitality, i.e. we're looking at projects in a very different way. We mix branded residences, service apartments, hotels, F&B and service office. Um, I used to be with the big, the big corporates and gone into private equity and different investor for, for this journey. And what do you think separates your company from those uh, those major players here at AHIC? Do you think you're able to offer a more sort of granular approach to the investments? Yes, I think we're at the moment the only mixed-use operator who can who can connect all of the components together. So we have a service office brand called OutSpace. So you can actually get a private office, a co-working desk, or a dedicated desk. Um, we don't run classical meeting floors anymore. Um, and then we connect that with a component of residential service department or a hotel. And I think the approach that we take, and people still ask me, what's the percentage of back of house areas and what's the perfect percentage of mix? And I think when you look at um, the Middle East at the moment, but not here, many other regions, you have an oversupply of a certain category of real estate. And you have certain locations that still work well or don't work well. And I think every project requires a very different approach um, and people have different expectation for a certain location. So I think what really makes us different is that we're still a, a mid-sized or medium-sized company. So we can get on the ground with people, actually sit, plan it out and then take it from there. And which markets do excite you? you talk to anybody about Dubai, you hear a lot of conflicting opinions on that. Saudi Arabia, a lot of money going in there. Where do you see the real growth uh, coming from in the next 12, 18 months? Um, well, Saudi, everybody's talking about Saudi. I think we had a great opportunity two and a half years ago to sign our project there. So we're, we're opening a brand new project in Saudi in September. And then we're launching two of our co-working slash serviced office uh, locations at the same time. Um, and it will be the first hotel that will not have a classical meeting floor actually in the region. So I think Saudi for us is a great focus point. We're doing a fantastic small boutique project in Kuwait with the Ladies Only Beach Club on the side of it. Um, and then Egypt, even though currencies are going up and down, we've, we've two and a half thousand keys in the pipeline for Egypt. I think one of the conversations I've had for many times, and, and you must have heard this, uh, Dubai is the business card and without Dubai, you know, you cannot stand in this region. I think the, the, the look on Dubai has changed a bit. But I do have to say that, yes, the big, the big real estate and the big projects, it wasn't for us and it's not for us, not in that market. But there's still not so much lifestyle. There's still very few real mixed-use projects where it's not just people building something together and it's a piece of real estate that's called mixed use but there's nothing mixed use about. There's very few projects that have an ecosystem. There's still very little connect between the people coming for travel and the local audience. And I know there was a lot of try to do this with FMB, but there's still too much FMB space. So I think for us, Dubai actually is much more interesting now in the current market because mid-market has picked up, we have a mid-market lifestyle concept and actually this I think people are people are more open. When we talked about this three years ago, we were saying ah, we need to have the five-star rate. Yeah, of course, you know, it's great but the amount that you invest does not determine the amount somebody's paying and I think this really makes a difference for us and a difference for the region. Now we're doing some projects in Georgia 3 and that market is picking up and really our growth strategy is going further east. I think when you look with regards to technology, which we're implementing with regards to training and other elements in the world that affect hospitality, and if that's delivering, uh, like drone delivery, cloud kitchen, dark kitchen, all of this kind of stuff, it's very interesting how you see how that impacts hospitality. And if you then take tech, there's so much more happening in, in the Middle East and Asia than there is anywhere Western world. Some interesting points, and I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much.